My Savior died Down where for cleansing from sin I cried There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to His name Glory to His name Glory to His name There to my heart was the blood applied Glory to His name I am so wondrously saved from sin Jesus so sweetly abides within There at the cross where He took me in Glory to fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to His name. Glory to His name. Glory fountain so rich and sweet cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet plunge in today and be made complete glory to His name glory to His name glory You may be seated. Let's all turn over to page number 88 and sing, I'm going that way. Page number 88. I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful life. A beautiful place of man fair and skies ever bright where all who believe the Savior dear forever shall stay and having been saved by grace divine I'm going that way I'm going that way the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to Him and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long, I'm going that way. news I tell and sing as I onward go, that those who are still astray in sin my Savior may know, I 
I want them to sing His praise above some beautiful day. For glory to Him who died for me, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I'm going that way. And Jesus the Savior I adore is with me each day. I'm clinging to Him and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long, I'm going that way. I know I shall meet Him at the gate when trials are past. I know I shall meet Him face to face in glory at last. And oh, I believe that when we meet well done he will say for trusting his soul redeeming love I'm going that way I'm going that way I'm going that way and Jesus the Savior I adore is with I'm clinging to Him and never to stray. Yes, singing His praises all day long, I'm going that way. All right, let's turn to page number 317. This will be our offertory hymn tonight. Page number 317 and sing His love lights the way. I've left the old paths I traveled so long I'm happy, redeemed, and free Of Jesus the Lord I sing a sweet song His love lights the way for me His love lights the way I travel today. I'm shouting the victory. My sadness is past. My sadness is past. I'm happy at last. His love lights the way for me. Pleasures of sin, no more I desire, no good in them now I see. The Spirit has set my being on fire, His love lights the way for me. His love lights the way. I travel today. I travel today. I'm shouting the victory. My sadness is past. My sadness is past. I'm happy at last. His love lights the way for me. Trial or come, add strength to my soul, and faithful I'll ever be. The billows of grace now over me roll, His love lights the way for me. His love lights the way. I travel today. I'm shouting the victory. My sadness is past. I'm happy at last. 
Bless this time. Now bless the singing, bless, bless the preaching. Lord, bless this offering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
number seven, thank you. Which pocket I put it in. All right, we should be good. If you ever put stuff in your pockets and forget which pocket you put it in, that's me on a daily basis. I work with about three screwdrivers and wire cutters and electrical tape and uh, my phone and wallet keys, and I'll be laying this pocket, that pocket, this pocket. I've learned as I got older. I love this front pocket. I'll get shirts every now and then and uh, go to put my phone there. There ain't no pocket to grab it. Falls right down the ground. <coughs> I'm nervous and I'm just trying to calm my nerves. Something special about staying behind this place. There's something special. I've, I've, I've had the luxury of they tease me going around and preach different churches in different states and I haven't made a different countries yet, maybe one day. But uh, I've stand behind many different pulpits.
But there ain't nothing like this one. You know why? This is home. I can go out and preach to 10, 15 people. They don't know me like you all know me. You know, there's something special about this place. I'm thankful that we got a choir who can sing good. I'm thankful that for some music, you know why? Been some places there ain't, there's no singing. They get me. That ain't good. We got Brother Wet. That's a blessing right there, right? We should, be, we should be thankful. Brother Josh pulled me aside last Sunday night, and he said, you got one in your chamber? I'm like, of course. But he was talking about preaching, you know. The good thing about, you know, you can carry multiple bullets in your, in your weapon of choice, right? We're going to be looking here in uh, Luke chapter 2. He, he also told me what to preach on. I appreciate that. That helps me out. And guess what I'm preaching at? Luke chapter 2. And uh, I, I've, I went through this week and I've read Luke and I read Ma- and Matthew. And I even went back into the, the Old Testament. But there's something special that the Lord showed me here in uh, Luke chapter 2. We're going to actually start in verse 8 tonight. I'm going to stand for the, the reading of God's Word. We're just going to read a, a few verses. We won't, we won't get into a lot here. There, there's, a, there's a lot here. And guess what? This, we probably have heard this preached to we're blue in the face. You know what? This is like a good song. It's okay to preach it again. Hey, these singers can sing songs over and over, and we like it. We, can, we got favorite songs we can listen to over. Hey, guess what? There's some good sermons I like to listen to over and over. We see here in Luke chapter 2, verse 8. We see here, And there, there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over the flock by night. We see, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. The glory of the Lord shone around them, about them, and they were so afraid. And that's how I am right now. I'm afraid. We see here, and the angel said unto them, Fear, fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And we see here, and this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swallowing clothes, lying in a manger. We see here, and suddenly, and suddenly there was with the, the angel of a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away uh, from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, uh, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger, and, and when they had seen it, we see here, and when they had seen it, they, they made known abroad uh, the saying which was told them concerning this child. And we see here, and, then, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told, uh, told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And we see here, and the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising uh, God for all things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Let's pray. Oh, Father, Lord, I thank you for another opportunity to stand behind this sacred desk, Lord. Lord, I ask you to calm my nerves this evening, Lord. Lord, be with the ones who are here, Lord. Be with, the, be with me, Lord. Give me the words to say, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Tonight, I, I want to look at these shepherds. I, I found some common things with these shepherds. You know why? I, I can see they're, they're kind of like how we are. And we see here, as Christmas, you know, Christmas time's coming. I didn't know if y'all knew that already, right? If you went to Hobby Lobby, you thought Christmas was in July, but it's not. You know, you watch the Hallmark Channel, and they got Christmas movies going in July. Hey, Christmas is about three weeks away. Hey, if you ain't ordering nothing on Amazon, you better do it tonight, because it may not make it here, right? We see a Christmas come. I want to ask you this. Think about this. Why were the shepherds chosen by God? There could, there could have been anybody else out there, but why the shepherds? Why, why the shepherds? They were, they were lonely, unknown, obscure, yet the angel of the Lord appeared to them. Uh, listen, he announced the birth of the Savior. It's that, someone special. You know, I, I think about, you know, we, we talk about Easter, we, we preach about Easter, we're, you know, we're thankful for Easter because, you know, why he died for us, Right? 
Not only he died, he got up, you know, he rose again. That, that's important stuff for our, our heritage, right? We call ourselves Christians because, you know, he, that, that's something he did for us, right? But guess what? You know why, you know why his birth's important? Anybody know? It's very simple. Don't let it over, go over your head. If he was never born, listen to this, if he was never born, he could never die. This, this year, I, I, I like sports, I know. Uh, there's a lot of football, there's a lot of, I've been to a lot of sporting events. Guess what, what starts off a game? Basketball, you got the tip off, right? A, a basketball game can't stop till, start till someone tips off. A football game, it, it can't start, the actual game can't start till someone kicks off. You got hockey, hockey game can't start till you have the face off. Soccer can't start, this is for Brother John Michael since he likes soccer. It can't start till you have the kickoff. I, I, listen, here. This was the tip-off, this was the kickoff. this was it. You know, you got NASCAR, the cars run out there. If you've never been to a NASCAR race, I've had uh, the opportunity to photograph NASCAR and Indy 500. But guess what, the race don't start till the drivers get to the starting line, right? And they usually say, start your engines, right? This is what happened. The angels came on and said, hey, he's being born tonight. He, he's coming. Guess what, if he never came... He could have never died. We should be happy. You know, there, I know there's a lot of people out there who celebrate Christmas. It, to them, it's just lights and trees and presents. You know, that, that's all fine, but that's not the meaning of Christmas. You know, I, I'm, I'm lucky enough, my birthday's, I was three days late. I was supposed to be born on Christmas. That would have been a great Christmas gift my parents, right? <laughs> Luckily, I, I was three days late. So I, I've learned this as I got older. I don't know, brother. Bro, I'm just a day older than brother Damon. I'll just tell you that, and uh, he's born day after me. But I, I, I always try to tell my parents, man, I, I want one good Christmas birthday gift. You know, it's piled on. Give me one good thing. But we we see that we think if you ask them what Christmas is, that's what they're going to give you. But it's more than that. And it's way more than that. It's the birth of our Savior. We see here, why, why the shepherds? What, what made them so special? We see here, they, they were simple. Uh, we see the same, they were responding in simple faith, came to worship the babe. Uh, they went on their way telling the good news. Yet, this is more than a heartwarming account with the birth of Christ as some tradition uh, that is trotted out every December. Do we, let me ask you this, do we sincerely accept the message and true purpose for Christmas coming to earth, for Christ coming to earth. Have you really thought about, you know, in a couple, about 20 some days, we're going to get up, we're going to go to someone's house, we're going to uh, unwrap some presents, and then we're going to go home. Now, that, now once you got kids, you got to put all these, you got to get rid of their old stuff so you can put in their new stuff, right? You know, Christmas is just another day, but man, it, it's far more special. We come to church tonight, we should be excited to be here. We should be excited. You know why? Because we're about to celebrate his birthday. You know, it, listen, if he was, I'm going to say this probably a million times tonight, so you're going to get it. When you get here, you're going to know, if he was never born, he would never die. He, look, think about that. If he never came on earth, he would never die for me. So we, we, we see here the shepherds, they, they were out there, they were just hanging out. They didn't have their phone to play with. They didn't have... They were on TikTok or Twitter or Instagram tweeting, hey, man, what, this, what these stars look like. They were out there working. I, I've learned some things. If, you're work, if you start working, Jesus may show up on you. you I also learned this. You can't do nothing serving the Lord sitting down. You know, my boss don't like it when I sit down. I get in trouble, right? Unless your brother Wesley drives a forklift. He gets to sit around all day. But you can't, you can't work doing nothing, right? Uh, I got a whole other sermon for a whole other day. But we see here the shepherds' lives, listen to this. The shepherds' lives were changed forever on that night. Man, I, I, I couldn't imagine being a shepherd out there. there are probably, there's probably something, man, I, I'm, I'm out here, you know, we're social distancing from the, the town. We're, you know, a shepherd was a lonely person. He, he, he was him and his sheep. That was it. All he cared about was his sheep. I'm thankful I got a shepherd who cares for his sheep. I'm, I'm thankful that I got a shepherd 
who's only worried about his sheep. So the shepherd, that shepherd was up all night watching his sheep while everybody else was sleeping. While, this, while everybody else in the town was sleeping, the shepherds were still awake. We see here in verse 8, uh, it says, And they're in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field. They weren't, I, they, I don't believe they were real close, but I believe they were just far enough. You know, I, I, I've had the, I know I told you I've gone out and preached. There's times where I get up in the morning, drive two hours or three hours. People at work think I'm nuts for doing that. Why, why, you, there's, there's better things you, you can be doing. Uh, they tell me, you know, hey, Brother Chris, they don't call me Brother Chris at, church, at my work, but Chris, why you, why you go out and drive two hours to get there and then two hours back? That's four hours of your day on Sunday. You know, you miss deer hunting, you miss, there's things you can go fishing, because that's the Lord's work. That's not because of me. So we see, we see the shepherds retreat. They were out there, it says this, that it is nighttime in the hills of Judea. These are hardworking shepherds are looking after their, their flocks, keeping an eye out for predators, potential dangers. How many of y'all ever uh, stood out at night watching? I got a dog, and sometimes at night uh, I'll go out there and just watch him do his, he'll dig, dig, and run around. No, you know why? Because I'm looking after my dog. You know, I don't know, Brother Tim's in the military, and Brother Paul. How many of y'all had to do like night watch, right? They don't sound fun. I like sleep, but someone's got to do it, right? If Brother Tim fell asleep on his post while he was supposed to be protecting his people, he'd get in big trouble, right? We see the, the shepherds, they, they were out there. They were, they were looking. They were keeping an eye on. They, they knew how many sheep were out there. You know, we could look at Luke chapter 15. That's a, a great representation of losing things in the sheep, but we're not going to preach that. But I want to I wanna try to get to the idea of why the shepherds? Why, what made them so special? We see they're out there, they're out there looking, they're, they're looking on their sheep. We see it's, it's a, a time of peace and quiet. You know, we see here the, the labors and physical tools of the day are behind them. It is reflect and result time. We see this, and it was, it was in the stillness of the night that God chose to send his messenger to reveal the birth of Christ to these band of shepherds. We see here they came, the angel came to them first, right? According to the Bible, the angels came to the shepherds first. You know, I, as I was reading and studying about the shepherds, that, that was not like a high society job. It was dirty, it was filthy, They're, they were unclean. Why would he choose the shepherds? Why, why would the angels come to the shepherds? We see here it's often those times of the quiet and, and stillness that the Lord will come to us. I mean, all been woken up about three o'clock from the Holy Ghost, right? It happens. I, I've learned as I start to preach and been out and preach and pray for sermons. Guess when the Holy Ghost usually comes? About two o'clock. Some of my preacher friends can vouch for me. I, I, at first, I, I never wrote down notes or anything, you know, because I was like, I'll remember that in the morning. Well, guess what? The older I get, I'll forget. What, what happened last night? But I, I believe the Lord can come to us, especially when, if we ain't looking for him. Uh, we see here they were, they were out there. They were, they were minding their own business. They were doing their job. Then we look here at verse 9 through 12. We see the angels report. We see the angels report and said, Lo, and the angel Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were so afraid. We see this, and the angel said this, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. I like that right there. I kind of got my, my Bible marked in verse 10. You know, it says, the angel said to them there, Fear not. Let, let me tell you this. There, there's some times in your life where you're, you get worried, right? There's some times and tribulations that happen. That, 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 that scare you a little bit. I remember, I got two kids, most of y'all know them, and uh, I remember when Zachary was born, it was a scary situation. You don't know, it's, 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 it's there, there's something about it, it's so unknown to me. And you know, it's, it's a worrying thing. As you got a kid, uh, as they're growing up, you're, you know, they start coughing, go to you, call the doctor, take the doctor. Guess what, when your second kid comes around, you ain't, a, you ain't worried, right? 
I stopped at two. I don't know. You can ask Brother Weston, Brother Tim about three and four and five. But we see here, fear not. Fear not. We see here, what great words of comfort. What, what great words of comfort. We see here nearly a hundred times in the Bible we find the words fear not or be not afraid. We see here uh, in, to Mary in Luke chapter 2 verse 30. They, the Bible says, fear not Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. We see to Joseph in Matthew chapter 1 verse 20, fear not. Uh, to, fear not to take unto thee, Mary, thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Now, we, we look at the Christmas story. I, I, I couldn't imagine being where Joseph was at. You know, I, as, as a husband, I, I couldn't imagine my wife coming to me, me and saying, Hey, I'm having a baby and it's not yours, right? Think about that as, as a human standpoint. Because according to Joseph, that's what she's saying. But we see here, fear not. So we, now we see the shepherds, the, uh, the Lord knows we have fears. We see here, it, it might be a financial fear. It may, it may be have some, you know, real enemies. Uh, it, may not, it may have to do with our family or our health. It may be relate, related to our walk with the Lord. But in every case, our, our fears can be claimed if we'll put our confidence in God. You know, one thing with my job... I think about fear. Sometimes I gotta handle electricity. You know, Brother Leonard deals with electricity. Guess what? It can be scary, right? Also with heights, I, I'm not afraid of. I'm, I'm right there. On the older I get, the the taller it gets, the the scarier it gets, right? If you've ever been up on a lift or uh, scaffolding up high, and you're, you know, there's some things that happens on jobs where I'm like, why did I do that? You know, but the Lord tells us to fear not. Two simple words. Now we get the phone call we're not expecting. You know, there, there's some times and situations that happen in your life that uh, you don't know what's going to happen. Guess what? Fear not. Fear not. I, I remember the Lord called me to preach. A long, long time. It's been a long time now, I feel like. I don't know why he asked me to preach youth night. I had to shave my beard to get all the gray out. But we see here, that I remember, Lord, why me? Well, there, there's other better people out there than me. It's, a scary, it, it's probably one of the most scariest things up here, but it's more than the most satisfying staying up here, doing the Lord's work. You know what? I've learned this. If, if, it's, if I'm trying to do it my way, it ain't going to work. But if you do it his way, it'll work. Fear not. We, we see here, the angels tell the shepherds, fear not. I mean, they're, they're out there. They're, they're, they're herding their sheep. It's dark. They didn't have flashlights. They don't know what's going on. All this ruckus comes apart. I mean, I would be scared too, right? You don't know what's happening. What, who, who, who's talking to me? I'm the only one who's supposed to be out here. So we, we see the angel says, fear not. I also like this. Psalms 118, verse 6. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? You know, I'm going to plug our Sunday school class here. I'm in Brother Paul's Sunday school class, Brother Junior. He's going through um, Joshua. You know, he keeps saying these verses, and you know, Lord fought for jo- the, the Lord fought for Israel. I guess what? Don't be scared. You got, you got the Creator on your side. He's the Creator. He, you got Him in your corner. What we see here, we look at fear not. No, only this, I, I want to show you, we, we see good tidings. Good tidings. The, the angel's announcement is good news. We don't get good news very much, right? How many of y'all watch the news? We, we, I get my news from my preacher. That's why I tell everybody. We see here good news. Good, we see here in verse 11, we see the good news is personal. Uh, the, the good news is personal. He said this, fear not for behold, I bring, the, I bring you good tidings. I bring you good tidings of great joy. It's personal. We, we see here the, the good news is personal for unto you. So we see John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, what he, he gave his everlasting son for me, for you, right? Not only that, we, we look at Romans chapter 10, verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. 
You know, I, I heard Brother Josh preach a message one time. I'm glad to be a whosoever. All right? That was a long time ago. I'm glad to be a whosoever. I'm thankful that it's for everybody. We see not only that, the good news is personal. We see this, the good news is present. It says, is born this day. It didn't say, hey, come back about two weeks. It didn't say, hey, about a month. It said, this day. Guess what? Today is the day of salvation, right? Today is the day. No more waiting. No more need to delay. Christ is going to be born today. Let me ask you this. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? The shepherds were out there. They, the angels came and said, hey, today is the day. Guess what? Jesus is being born today. What do you think they did? You think, oh, okay, I got time. It's still, you know, it won't be daylight for a couple hours. We'll, we'll travel. When it, we like traveling. I got, I got to see all my sheep. It says today's the day. Not only that, the good news is practical. I believe it's still practical in today. We see the word, the, it says a, a Savior. I like that word. I, I got the definition here. Uh, the Savior is one that saves or preserves but properly applied only to Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, who has opened the way to everlasting salvation by His obedience and death, and who is therefore called the Savior by the way of distinction, the Savior of man, and the Savior of the Word. We see that this, man, this, man, this is mankind's greatest need. We need a Savior. I'm glad that he, he came. We see this is mankind's need. Uh, we see that the need has been met through the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only that, we see the, the good news is uh, fulfillment of prophecy. It says, which is Christ the Lord. We see here, he is the Messiah. Messiah. Uh, he's the anointed one of Israel. Uh, he's the Savior who had been prophesied of the, in the Old Testament and the long-awaited. If you look back to the Old Testament, you can find, you can find Jesus. Go through every, every chapter and every book of the Old Testament, you can find Jesus. We look at Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. It says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall call his name Emmanuel. Man, I'm, I'm thankful for this. Knowing that, we see this, it's to all people. Now we said this earlier, but I want to hit on again. It's to all people. All nations, all walk of life, all classes. This announcement came to the shepherds. If it had come to kings, noblemen, or uh, dignitaries, some might doubt that it really was for all people. He came for you. He came for you. you don't, I, I like that because no matter what, he came, he came to the shepherds who were the lowest, the lowest, the lowest. And, and it filled the, the, profi, the prophecy. But on that, it, it came... The, the shepherds were just a hard-working people, like us. Guess what? I don't have to have a lot of money. I don't have to have a fancy job. I don't have to have a, a big house. I don't have to have a nice car. It don't matter. The Bible, Jesus does not require any of that. He just wants you. He just wants you. What are you waiting for? The, the shepherds were out there. They were abiding their sheep. They were waiting. The angels told them to go. Today is the day. Now, if I came here and told you, hey, guess what? If you go to the certain gas station and if you, if you put these certain numbers in, you would win the lottery today. How many of y'all would hop out here right now and run, right? Oh, come on now. Right? Y'all wait? But if, if something was that important, y'all would hop up and run, Right? If, you're, if something important happened, your mom called or your wife called and said, hey, you got to get home, uh, I need you here now. I, mean, I would probably stop what I'm doing and head home and go. That's the urgency I believe we need to have. Guess what? Our, 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 our clock is running out, I believe. We don't have much time to wait. You know, are, we, are we waiting for somebody else to do it? Are, are you waiting for someone else? And man, I, I know this would be great. I know if this would, would be, you know, if Brother Josh did this on visitation, I, I believe we'd get more, so much more people. Get out there and help them. You know, it's easy to say, hey, I wish we, we did this or wish we did that. Get out there and help. The shepherds were out there working. I believe Jesus, we, we, we see here this is a, 
a picture of it don't matter who you are. They were unclean, they were filthy, they, they didn't have shower, they didn't take daily showers, let me put it that way. People didn't want to be around, they stunk, they were around animals. I mean, I've been in a house with uh, people who have a bunch of, i got to be careful I say this, a bunch of animals, dogs, cats, they don't take care of them. Guess what, it reeks, it stinks. Cats are worse than dogs, I'm sorry if you got cats, Miss Selma, I'm sorry. She, not, it's not her, like, I've been to houses, like, I walk in the door and there's 15 cats, they're looking at me. And you, you can smell it in the driveway, let's put it that way. you got to think, these people are around the sheep. They, they lived in the woods. They, they didn't have the luxury of deodorant and soap. They were unclean as unclean can get. But Jesus, they, the angels came to them first. Think about that. They came to them first. Told them first. They didn't go to the people who had all the money. They didn't go to the kings and all them. They didn't go to the super spiritual ones. They went to the ones who were out there laboring. He took care of the ones who were out there laboring. We see this, the, we see the angels rejoicing in verse uh, 13 through 14. And so there was with the, the angel of the multitude. Yeah. And so there was the angel of the multitude. And uh, there was the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. It came to pass, the angels were gone away. The angels were rejoicing. When's the last time you rejoiced about Jesus? When's the last time you come to church shouting and praising his name? When's the last time? Think about it. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. We should want to worship him every day. I, I get I'm so thankful to get up out of bed in the morning. I'm thankful for the opportunities he gives me. We see this, as soon as the angel had finished his announcement, he was surrounded by a vast multitude of angels, a heavenly choir, and they praised God loudly. We better practice, Brother Wally. They, they, they got a choir in heaven. Listen, they got a choir in heaven. They got angels came down the choir, heavenly choir, and they praised God loudly. I believe church house meant to be able to get a little loud sometimes, right? It's hard praising, hard praising them. I'm like, man, one time this guy, I got to get up in the morning. You know, he's still going. It's six, you know. We shouldn't worry about that. We need to come to church praising him loudly. Brother Jack get up here next week and start preaching on the star. And y'all start shouting amen. He, he may have a heart attack. Probably would. He'd he he be like, I'm a, am I in the right church? Guess what? There's ball game on this week. How many of y'all are sitting there and one knows that holler at the, the, the TV saying, Coach, that, why did you run that play? Holler, refs, they can't even, they're in a whole other state and you're hollering at the refs saying, that was a foul. Guess what? That, that's some things, when you like something, it makes you get excited. Right? When you, when you like some things, it gets you excited. How many of y'all like going to church? You should be excited. To come here. The, the angels were excited. They loudly, you know, ever been loud? You know, gyms are loud, right? But the church house isn't. The church house isn't. We see here the angels came loud. They praised God loudly. But why? Ask yourself why. Because Jesus' birth brought glory to God. On that, Jesus' birth brought peace to man peace to mankind that was the hope they were looking for you know we're, we're kind of spoiled today and you know we can look back and see Jesus came and he lived his his life and he was born and he died you know we have the full Bible but the Old Testament didn't the Old Testament were looking for the signs they were looking for the Savior and I believe when that stuff started to happen man I bet you they got it's about to, it's about to get down right it's about to get real. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I went to a buffet, and I was pumped. You know why? Because I ain't been to a buffet in a while. It was about to, I was about to throw down, right? I get, food makes me excited, if you don't know, right? There's something special about it. I'm thankful I can eat. You all can tell that, right? But the thing is, come to church. We, we should want to 
we should want to get in this word. We should want to be, you know, they should, the doors should be locked like Black Friday and people are begging to get into, this, into the church house because I need to worship today. Right? That's how we should be. Think about this. If the shepherds didn't care, oh, we'll go see Jesus next week. I got, I got these sheep here, man. This, this one sheep over here, it, it's, it's got COVID. I don't know what to do about it. That's how we are. We put God last. The, she, the, the angel said today. He's being born today. We, we see here the, the shepherds said today. We, we look here, the angels are rejoicing. Knowing that, we see the, the shepherds' response. And it came to pass, the angels were gone away uh, from, uh, from them into heaven. The shepherds said to one another, listen to this. Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. They didn't say, hey, hey let's, let's wait next week. Give us about a month. We can't travel at night. It says, let us, let us now go. Now. Instant. Man, there, there's some times when the Lord's telling you to do some things. We want to put on the back burner. That don't, that don't meet my, no, our priorities ain't right. Guess what? We need to get his priorities. The, the shepherds didn't wait. They, they were excited. They, they, were, they were ready to go. We see this. It was an immediate response. An immediate response. It said, let us now go. And I like this. And it says this in verse 16. And they came with haste. You remember what that word? I had to look it up. Uh, it's not a word I use in my, my daily, you know, hey, let's go to a McDonald's, like, haste. You know, I don't, I don't know how to use that word. It's not, so I looked it up, and guess what it means? Sudden excitement of passion, quickness. Guess what, ladies? When that, that item goes on, on sale, guess what? You go right then and there and get it, right? Or you get your phone out and order on Amazon. You know why? Because it ain't going to be on sale for uh, real long because it sells out. If you, if you miss it, it's gone. You can't get it no more. Guys, the, the shepherds, it says, and they came with haste. It was a sudden excitement of passion. I believe it goes back to passion. They were excited. They wanted to see Jesus. They went then and there. You know, one thing I was thinking about as I was reading this today and going over this sermon, it never says, hey, i got to call somebody to come take care of my sheep. You know, they probably had hundreds of sheep out there. They didn't worry... They were more concerned of what Jesus wanted them to do. Think about it. You know, if you got kids, you know, running around your kids different places, I just can't leave them at home. You know, we got to make sure they're taken care of. We got to make sure they're fed and they're, you know, we got to make sure as a parent these things get done, right? As a, a sheep herder, that was the same ideal. But they never said, hey, what, what am I going to do with my sheep? They just went. I'm not saying don't leave your kids in the car when you come to church. Bring them in. But we see here, there was no, hey, I, there was no excuses made. We see this. We see the word now. While, while we have the opportunity, we see that Christ is so close, he's in the same country, we may not have any other chances. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6 says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Guess what? You can find Jesus here. I'm talking about you can, you can find him here at the altar. Guys, he's here. If you don't know him, you need to come find him. We see 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. It says, For he saith, I have heard thee, thee in the time accepted, and in the day of the salvation have I secured thee. It says this, Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Knowing this, I, I believe now is why it's fresh in our hearts and mind. I learned some things as the older I get. My wife tells me to do something. If I wait longer than an hour, I'm going to forget about it. All right? We, husbands, we can testify, right? Uh, sometimes I've gone outside and, you know, my ADHD, she tells me to go out there and get something from the shed. And uh, I'll go out there and then my phone will ding and then I'll just lose all thought. And I'll learn this. I'll wander around until she's like, hey, don't forget to grab this on the way in. Because I forgot while I was out there. This is fresh. This is something on their mind. 
He said, today, come, come, go find Jesus today. Not only that, I, I believe this, we see this, it, we see the shepherds return as we start closing. The shepherds return. And when they had seen it, they made known to bride, saying, uh, which told them concerning this child. And the shepherds returned, glorying and praising God for all the things that they heard and seen. And we see this as it was told unto them. Having seen the infant, the Savior, the shepherds' hearts were overflowing with excitement and joy. Listen to this. Listen to what they did. They had to tell others as they returned to their flocks. They couldn't keep it in. Guys, we see here at the end, at, at the, she the shepherds. It says, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things that they had heard and seen. And it was told with them. We see here, they went and saw Jesus. They went and found Jesus. But guess what? They left a different person. They left, they left a, as a different person than they found Jesus. And guess what? They were so excited, they went and told others. They went and told others about Jesus. As Brother Wesley comes to the piano, or he, as Brother Paul, Miss, Miss Tootsie come to the piano. I don't know where our piano players are, but it's all right. As we close... Brother Josh, come to the piano. Just kidding. But listen here. As Christmas is coming, as, as we, we gather the weeks, we, we gather presents, and we gather all the worldly things, we'll, we, we schedule times to meet with our family to have Christmas dinner and share Christmas presents. But guess what? There's, some, there's something else we can share. You know my wife can get me some, some nice clothes and, or some nice shoes, but guess what? Those things are going to tear up, wear out, and they're no good. But the best Christmas gift you can give somebody is tell them about Jesus. The Bible said he, he died for it. He gave, he, he'll give you everlasting life. You see, in Romans, the Bible says, but God commanded his love toward us. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. But think about this, as we, we celebrate his birth, if he was never born, he could never die. If he was never born, he'd never die. Altars are open this evening. Maybe there's a loved one you need, you need to pray for, a family member that you, you know that's not saved. You know, we could buy them the most expensive gift out there, but the best gift you can give them is to tell them about Jesus. Because it ain't, it ain't going to wear out. Jesus ain't going to break on you. Guess what? Jesus ain't going to run out of batteries. He's always going to be there. The Bible says he'll, he'll, he stick is closer than a brother. Let me tell you this. If, if there's something you're going through, the angels gave the shepherds a, a good advice there. Fear not. Fear not. Maybe there's a trouble or trial you're going through. Say, so Brother Chris, I, I don't know how I'm going to handle it. I, I, I don't know how I'm physically going to go through the unknown of what's about to happen. Fear not. Altars are open this evening. If you find you find you a place to pray tonight. Turn to page three seventy-five. Have thine own. 